God created, uh, before he created man, God created the angels. And the greatest angel created was Lucifer. And really, Lucifer's a beautiful name, and he's right there. And so he was the brightest, most intelligent, beautiful angel. But Lucifer and all the angels, they were created in sanctifying grace. They didn't have the beatific vision yet, though. And in order to have a beatific vision, they had to earn it just like we do. And so they had to pass a test. And the test was that God revealed to the angels that his, the second person of the Holy Trinity, Jesus, would take flesh in the womb of a woman and that she would be queen of heaven and earth. And Lucifer, because of his pride, he said, "Not serve God, I will not serve. Because of his pride, the human nature is the world angelic nature. And he's knocking about down to a woman who would be his queen. And so God had to cast them, the angels had a big war, and they were cast out of heaven. And when God created earth, in the center of earth, he created hell for the place the angels and for men who will not serve him. And so it's important for us to notice because when God creates Adam and Eve, the serpent is in the garden, and he comes to Eve. Why? She's the mother of all the women. And he tests her, he tempts her, he puts doubts in her head to defy God. And because of her curiosity, she fell into sin and she led her husband into sin. And because Adam is the head of the whole human race, he has moral headship. He either merited all of us or he merited. Of course, he committed the sin. We were, we were banned from heaven and the gates were closed. And this is why Jesus takes flesh. Because man cannot be reconciled with God on his own. Because the sin, original sin, is an infinite offense against God. And man is a finite being. And he can't merit when he's in mortal sin. If your soul is not in communion with God, you receive no merit for any good you do. And you can't make reparation and atonement for sins when you're in mortal sin. And second of all, the sin was infinite. And because it was infinite, it has to make, no man can make atonement for an infinite offense. So Christ, Jesus Christ, second person of the Holy Trinity, takes flesh and he becomes a man like us in all things except sin. And because he's now a man, he can make reparation and atonement of sins for a man. But he's not a human person, he's a divine person. And so every act that Christ makes as human, in his human nature, has an infinite value. And so he takes flesh in the womb of the Blessed Virgin, the Immaculate One, that God prepared for all eternity to be pure, spotless. And he says in Genesis, when he kicks out of Eve out of the garden, he didn't leave them and abandon them. He gave the first prophecy of the Messiah, that he will put enmity between me and the woman, between her seed and his seed. She shall strike at her, he shall strike at her heel, and she will crush his head. That is the blessed virgin Mary. And so, my friends, God created us in his image and in his likeness. And that is beautiful. And God created us, what? To know him, to love him, to serve him in this world in order to be happy with him forever and eternity. And so, this devil who hates us, why does he hate us? He hates us because he has fallen. And he will be, he's in hell for eternity and he can never be free from hell. And he comes after us, he hates us because we are in the, created in the image of God. And that we can possess what the devil has lost for all eternity. So we are in a battle from now until the end of the world St. Paul tells us our battle is not against flesh and blood, but the principalities, the demons. The demons. And so from the beginning of creation, man has been obedient, disobedient to God. And for, for once the, uh, Adam and Eve left the garden, it took 4,000 years for God to send his son, Messiah. Why? Why did God wait 4,000 years? St. Thomas Aquinas tells us one of the main reasons was because the Jews were so stubborn 
They thought they could do it on their own. They thought they could do everything without God. No matter how much miracles, many miracles God created, gave them manna in the desert, made water come out of rocks, split the Red Sea. They would go to God, but then they would drift away from Him because the world was brought sex, drugs, everything. And nothing has changed, my friends. And so he said it took 4,000 years for them to realize we need a Savior. We need God. And so Christ comes, and what has happened now? 4,000 years later, from out of need, Christ comes. And now we have 2,000 years of revelation up to now. And man is more rebellious now than he's ever been. This great country of yours, it was a great country like many other countries, France, Spain, Christendom was great at one time. In this country, the devil has taken a vengeance on. A vengeance, abortion is now approved, legal in our, who would ever have to believe that? Illegal, killing babies in their mother's womb, innocent babies, and the crime of abortion, the biggest crime is those babies are denied the atypic vision. They cannot go to hell because they didn't commit any personal sin because they don't have a, a developed intellect and will. But they have original sin. And you can't enter into the beatific vision with original sin. And so these babies go to the limbos of the babies as well, where they're perfectly happy, but they're denied the beatific vision. This is the crime. And the devil, every time he sees a baby in his mother's womb, it reminds him of the Blessed Virgin Mary who see Christ in his womb, who crushes his head. Now it's legal in this country to kill babies. I've seen all these signs all over Ireland uh, about slaughterhouse and or, uh, how we shouldn't slaughter animals, but they don't care about slaughtering babies. And now this week here is gay pride week in this country. Homosexuality, lesbianism is an abomination in God's sight. And we have to pray for these people and for their conversion because you can't get to heaven like this. So we come here to beg Our Lady to have mercy, not only on this country, but the whole world. We make reparation. We pray for the conversion of sinners. We pray that people will repent of their sin. Because Our Lady tells us, if we pray the rosary, we will stop wars, we will stop famine. And if we pray the rosary, it will convert these people that embrace unnatural vices, homosexuality, lesbian. It will convert abortionists people that kill babies in their mother's womb, doctors who take an oath to protect life, to save lives, are slaughtering babies. This is, this is diabolical, my friends. And this is why we're here, to pray, listen to our lady. And so God does everything, he comes to us, he sends his son, his son dies on the cross for us, and we still don't pay attention. And so now he sends his mother's mother to us, how many times? 1917, the beautiful children of Fatima. And she warned us about Russia, that if Russia is not concentrated to our love, Russia will spread her error throughout the whole world. The whole nations will be annihilated. And that's what we're doing. What's the rotten errors of Russia? Number one, communism. Number two, atheism, because that's what communism leads you. Atheism. And it spread throughout not only Ireland, it's in my country, America, it's everywhere. Because we haven't been obedient to the Mother of God. And our bishops and the Pope have not been obedient to the Mother of God. Let us pray for their conversion. And we, that's our role, our part, to get on our knees like we did here. And beg God, beg the Blessed Virgin. Consecrate your children to the Immaculate Heart. Consecrate your loved ones so that they will be converted, so that we can all be in heaven with God and the Blessed Virgin. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, amen.